Hi there. We're going to go over how to use Kramer's rule to solve a 2x2 system of linear equations. By 2x2 two two system, we just mean that we've got two linear equations. We're going to solve that system using Kramer's rule, which requires the use of some 2x2 two two matrices. Now, if you found that you didn't really like using substitution or elimination to solve systems of equations, perhaps you found it a little tricky to manipulate the equation properly, you may find Kramer's rule a better option since really it just requires arithmetic once you know how to use it. How Kramer's rule works is detailed in this little box, but I don't want you to worry too much about the box for now. Let's just go through an example, and as we go through it, I'll tie what we're doing to the notation and everything in this box, and then I think it will make perfect sense. You need to know how to take the determinant of a 2x2 two two matrix to use Kramer's rule, but that process is straightforward enough that you'll catch on watching this lesson if you don't know how to do it already. Now before we start, I want to make sure you don't lose sight of what we're actually doing here. By solving this system of linear equations, we're finding the x and the y value that will make both equations true at the same time. And in terms of graphing, these are both linear equations, which means they are both lines, and so what we're doing is finding the coordinates of the point where the lines intersect. Okay, let's use Kramer's rule to do it. If you look at the box telling us about Kramer's rule, it says let A be the coefficient matrix of this linear system. Here is our linear system, and indeed, the first thing we have to do is to find the coefficient matrix. The coefficient matrix is just the matrix of coefficients. So let's write it here in blue. I'll zoom in just a little bit. In the coefficient matrix, you can think of the left column as the x column and the right column as the y column. Just like when we write an ordered pair, the left coordinate is the x coordinate and the right coordinate is the y coordinate. Just like that. So in this left x column of the coefficient matrix, we put the coefficients of x. Now remember, in order to use this rule, you're going to have to make sure your lines are in standard form. In this case, they are. We've got x and y on the same side and just constants on the other side. So we're in standard form. We're good to go. Here in the left column, we'll put the coefficients of x. The coefficients, remember, are the numbers getting multiplied by the variable. So that's 8 and 2. The coefficients of y that go in the right column are 5 and negative 4. Make sure you don't forget that negative. That's negative 4. So the coefficients in this column are 5 and negative 4. Now, again, our goal is to find x and y. And if you look at the expressions for x and y given by Kramer's rule, you'll see that they both have a determinant of a in their denominators. a is the coefficient matrix, so what we have to do is actually find the determinant of the coefficient matrix. And that's easy enough. So I'll just write determinant here. We're taking the determinant of this coefficient matrix, and I'll go ahead and change colors. To find the determinant of a 2x2 two two matrix, we start by multiplying across the top to bottom diagonal, the one that looks like that. So this diagonal here, multiply across it. That's 8 times negative 4, and then subtract the product of the bottom to top diagonal. So this diagonal here, 2 times 5, will subtract 2 times 5. This is 8 times negative 4, that's negative 32, minus 10, so the determinant is negative 42. Now that we've found the determinant of the coefficient matrix, we can start to write our expressions for x and y. And I'll do that over here. x equals and y equals. Notice, by Kramer's rule, x is equal to a thing that we'll talk about later, divided by the determinant of a. 
Similarly, y is equal to the determinant of a thing, which we'll talk about in a minute, divided by the determinant of a. We just found the determinant of a. a is the coefficient matrix. So we can start to set this up. x is a thing that we'll do in a minute, divided by negative 42, the determinant of the coefficient matrix. y, same sort of thing. It's a thing that we'll calculate later, divided by the determinant of the coefficient matrix. So divided by negative 42. And I'll just move those over to the left. Okay, so we've got to start. Now we got to calculate these things in the numerators. The determinant here in the numerator of the expression for x is often called dx for convenience. And similarly, the determinant in the numerator for y is called dy. So we could come back over here and write those in our expression. x is dx over negative 42 and y is dy. Now we'll go ahead and start by calculating dx and I'll go back to writing in blue. dx is pretty simple. We're basically just taking the determinant of the coefficient matrix but with a slight change. Where we previously had the coefficients of x for dx, we should replace them with the constants from our linear equations. So we'll set this determinant up. Since it's a determinant, I'm going to use the straight bars here. Remember, for determinant notation, you can use the determinant function by just writing DET, or you can use these straight lines, and that's what I'm going to use here. So again, we've got to take the determinant of the coefficient matrix, but with the x coefficient replaced by the constants. So instead of the x coefficients, we'll have the constants 2 and negative 10 from our linear equations. And then the coefficients of y are left unchanged, 5 and negative 4. And then we just have to go ahead and calculate this determinant. First, we multiply along the top to bottom diagonal. So that's 2 times negative 4. 2 times negative 4, and then subtract across the other diagonal. That's negative 10 times 5. So minus negative 10 times 5. Sorry if you think I'm using too many parentheses. I'm just being careful to make sure that we don't make any sign errors. All right, so what is this? 2 times negative 4 is negative 8 minus negative 10 times 5. Negative 10 times 5 is negative 50. So this is negative 8 minus negative 50. That's negative 8 plus 50, and that's positive 42. That is dx. So we can go back over and write that in the numerator of the expression for x. dx over negative 42, we just calculated, is positive 42. And so we are done solving for x. What is x? It's 42 over negative 42, which is negative 1. And now we've just got to go ahead and solve for dy, or just calculate dy, rather. And this is very similar. It's the determinant of the coefficient matrix with a slight change. The coefficients of y need to be replaced by the constants from our equations. So now the coefficients of x will be left unchanged, just 8 and 2. And then the coefficients of y get replaced by 2 and negative 10. And again, we have to calculate this determinant. That's going to be 8 times negative 10, so negative 80, minus 2 times 2, so 4. Negative 80 minus 4 is negative 84. Seems like a little bit of a big and ugly number, but it's not so bad if we come over and put it in our expression for y. y is dy over negative 42, and we just calculated that dy is equal to negative 84. So y is equal to negative 84, divided by negative 42, and that is positive 2. And now we have solved the system of linear equations. The solution is x equals negative 1, y equals positive 2. Those are the xy coordinates that make both of these equations true. That's the point where the lines 
intersect. That's how you use Kramer's rule. Now, here's another example, and I want you to give it a try on your own before watching the solution. For your convenience, I have duplicated the box with Kramer's rule detailed here, so go ahead and give it a swing. Okay, I hope you gave it a try. Let's go through it together. We went through the last one pretty carefully, so I'll try to take us through this one a little more quickly. Zoom in here. We've got to start off with the determinant of the coefficient matrix, so let's just set up the coefficient matrix first. It's just the matrix of coefficients of our linear equations. Coefficients of x go first, that's 6 and 4, and then the coefficients of y, which, make sure you don't ignore the negatives, the coefficients of y are negative 8 and negative 5. Negative 8, negative 5, and then we need to take the determinant of this coefficient matrix. Again, just for consistency, I'll write the calculation in red. It's going to be 6 times negative 5, which is negative 30, minus 4 times negative 8, which is negative 32. So this is negative 30 minus negative 32. That's negative 30 plus 32, which is positive 2. Now, we can go ahead and start setting up these expressions for x and y. I'll write those in purple here just to mix it up. x is equal to the determinant of a thing that we'll calculate in a minute, divided by the determinant of the coefficient matrix, which we just calculated to be 2. y is a similar sort of thing, the determinant of a thing that we'll calculate in a minute, divided by 2. And again, I hope you can recognize how those things look in this box that's telling you how to use Kramer's rule. This is how you do it. All right, so now we just need to calculate the things that go in the numerators of x and y. That's dx and dy, if you remember. Let's start off with calculating dx. Remember, dx is the determinant of almost the coefficient matrix, we just replace the coefficients of x with the constants from our linear equations. So the coefficients of x get replaced by 4 and negative 4, and the coefficients of y are left unchanged, negative 8 and negative 5. This determinant is equal to 4 times negative 5, which is negative 20, minus negative 4 times negative 8, which is positive 32. So this is negative 20 minus 32, and that is negative 52. That is dx. So over here in my expression for x, I'm going to go ahead and put dx in the numerator. dx is negative 52. So x is equal to negative 52 divided by 2, which is negative 26. Man, this rule is pretty nice. We just figured out x quite quickly. Now, we just need to solve for y, and to finish that off, we just have to calculate dy. So let's set up that determinant. It's the determinant of the coefficient matrix, almost. You just take the coefficients of y and replace them with the constants. So now the coefficients of x are left unchanged, just 6 and 4. The coefficients of y become the constants from our equations, 4 and negative 4. This determinant is equal to 6 times negative 4, that's negative 24, minus 4 times 4, so that's minus 16. This is equal to negative 24 minus 16, that's negative 40. So dy is negative 40, so y equals negative 40 divided by 2, which is negative 20. And so we have successfully used Kramer's rule to solve this 2x2 two two system. The solution is x equals negative 26, y equals negative 20. That's the point where these two lines intersect, which is right around there on the graph, although it's a little tough to see because the lines are pretty close together. But that's the one point where they actually intersect, the x and y value that makes both equations true. And that's how you use Kramer's rule. There is, however, one last thing I want to touch on before we go. You may recall when using substitution or elimination, we didn't always end up with one nice solution. Sometimes we'd end up with an obviously true statement, like 0 equals 0. 
or sometimes we'd end up with a contradiction, like 0 equals 1. When we had something obviously true, that meant that the equations were actually the same, and so there are infinitely many solutions. When we got a contradiction, that meant that there are actually no solutions. The equations are describing parallel, but not equal, lines that never intersect. So the question is, how does that stuff pop up when we're using Kramer's rule? Well, notice, in the expressions for x and y, we have this division by the determinant of the coefficient matrix. If that determinant is 0, we can't use the rule. We can't do the division. You can't put 0 in the denominator. And so that's the indicator to us, if we're using Kramer's rule, that our system either has infinitely many solutions or has none. But with Kramer's rule alone, you can't pick out which is which. You'd have to do some further investigation. Let me show you a quick example of this. Here we have a system of linear equations. And if I wanted to try applying Kramer's rule, the first thing I would do is calculate the determinant of the coefficient matrix. So that's 4 and 2, the coefficients of x, and then negative 8 and negative 4, the coefficients of y. This determinant is equal to 4 times negative 4, so negative 16, minus 2 times negative 8, so negative 16. Negative 16 minus negative 16 is 0, so there I see I'm not going to be able to use Kramer's rule because I can't divide by 0. So that tells me either there are no solutions to this system or there are infinitely many. And if you're not sure how to, deter how to determine if there are infinitely many or if there are none based on the equations, check out some of my other videos on this topic. In this example, I can quickly tell that the top equation is just the bottom equation multiplied by 2. So they are in fact describing the exact same line, and so there are infinitely many solutions. Anyhow, that is how you use Kramer's rule, and I hope this was a helpful introduction for you. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions, and coming up, we'll see how to use Kramer's rule to solve a 3x3 three three system of linear equations. Further away is closer to time, Sun up to you is shadow to me with one